Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We are ex excited to have Trevor Harnett, who founded Market Delta with us today. Uh, Trevor is now a full-time professional trader, and he's focused on the equity index futures, and he will be helping us to get to know TPO charts today. This will be an introductionary webinar on TPO, TPO uh, profile charts, and it's going to be a great resource for those getting to know this type of uh, this chart type, and uh, just for traders who want to add this to their trading arsenal. Uh, Trevor has in-depth knowledge of footprint charts, really a revolution in charting where a whole new dimension was added to candlestick charts, showing volume traded at each uh, price, indicating whether it's buyers or sellers that are influencing movements in prices. And with so much expertise in order flow and bid ask volume charts, TPO charts, etc., uh, he was an in integral part of the development process of the new TPO charts within Trade of Eight, available within our uh, chart beta module. So it's great to have Trevor here. And uh, before we get started, let's just get over the uh, go over the standard disclaimer. So uh, brokerage services are provided by Trade of Eight. Trade of it is a member of the NFA and registered with the CFTC. This is not an offer or a solicitation for brokerage services or other products or services in any jurisdiction where Trade of Eight is not authorized to do business or where such offer or solicitation would be contrary to local laws and regulations of that jurisdiction. Futures and options trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Investors should understand the risk involved in trading and carefully consider whether such trading is suitable in light of their financial circumstances and resources. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So after this presentation, we will open up for questions. So feel free to submit them in advance using the, uh, the chat in uh, Zoom, and we will consider those and, and go over those at the end. Now I will uh, open up or I'll I'd like to present Trevor Harnett. So uh, welcome, Trevor, and uh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Baz, and thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, as you can tell, I don't have a formal presentation, and I've, I'm doing that uh, for good reason. I, I really want you to be able to see the software um, as I move around it. A lot of this will be kind of hands-on, not that you're going to have to be following along with your platform, but uh, I want you to see what I'm talking about as I reference it, and um, hopefully you can get a feel for how the software, how, how it works, and uh, some of the functionality that's offered. But today, today's our, the beginner, we call it the beginner TPO chart webinar. Next week is the advanced one. So I am under the assumption today that, um, Either you know a little bit about TPO charts or nothing. Uh, if you're a real sophisticated user, I still encourage you to hang around. You're bound to pick up something um, that's helpful. Um, but I really want to lay some of the groundwork for those who just don't know that much about it and uh, looking to potentially incorporate these into their, their trading arsenal. Um, and then it'll also provide us the foundation for next week because I won't spend much time on the basics next week and I'll get in detail uh, quite a bit more. But I do intend to describe what it is and then I do want to show a few use cases as a trader how you might use this chart. It's not going to be all definitions and, and theory. Uh, I do want to provide some practical uh, tools and tips that you can uh, walk away with today. So with that said, let me just give a little background on what TPO charts are for those who don't know. Because the one thing, when I first started looking at these, I'm like, I'm looking at letters, not numbers. And it, it was kind of like, why am I looking at alphabet when, I'm, when we're talking about trading prices and things like that? And where that came from, just a little history, is from the trading floor. The trading floor, when the traders would be in the pit and they had a, a trading card, uh, there was um, each half hour was called a bracket. And they would write down, when they did trades, they would have to write down the letter that the bracket, uh, that the trade occurred in. What, what bracket was it? 
And so each letter was very specific to a half hour time frame. And that's how the letters kind of became, um, uh, I guess, the building blocks for uh, the TPO charts. And I want to, in terms of definitions, TPO charts are the same as market profile charts when it comes to just you might hear the term, both those terms thrown around among traders, market profile or TPO charts. Other platforms may even call them other, other names, but TPOs are, TPO charts are kind of the standard. And TPO stands for time, price, opportunity. That's uh, kind of what I know it as, time, price, opportunity. And each letter, each letter would be a TPO each letter that you see. And actually, let me zoom in as I talk so you can see this a little bit better. All I'm doing, this is actually a little tip. If you hover over the scale and use, I'm using a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can zoom you know, up and down with the scroll wheel. That's what I'm doing. And then if I hover over the chart and use the scroll wheel, notice it kind of widens, it widens it out, right? You can see that widens the scale. Um, but anyway, the way these are built is as price trades, as a price trades, it prints a TPO. So just, I have a candlestick up over here, 30 minute bar. Uh, and I, I'm doing that so you can kind of see, uh, I want you to build a reference what something you probably know against, uh, maybe this is a new concept for everybody. But basically, let me split this. What I've done is if you if you can hopefully you can see this, these each bracket, so I start with bracket A, that's my first bracket. This is the SP E mini today. Uh, each bracket is a half is the half hour uh, that it represents. So A would be 9:30 to 10 o'clock Eastern, which is the same as this candlestick bar. The next bar, this one, is this second bar on a candlestick. And what it does is it's essentially think of each bar or each uh, bracket as a candle, if you want to think of it that way. And what it does, the beauty of what TPO charts does is, is it, as the market rotates around, moves up and down, what it does, I'm going to collapse this, it builds a distribution. And you can obviously see that, right? Um, and so that is one of the key things that traders utilize and benefit from by looking at a TPO chart. It helps you look at how a market is backing and filling, trading up and down, and where it tends to revert to. And so it provides a, a unique view of the market, whereas a candlestick chart, and I use candlestick charts personally, I, I, I do look at those. It's not that they're not useful. Um, but they're broken out in time, you know, each half hour or whatever time frame you look at. So uh, you can see what it looks like here, you know, just 30 minute bars. But if you were to compress these, just stack them all up so that as price traded uh, into the future, uh, as it say trades below the prior bar, it would stack itself up. That's what you end up having on the TPO chart. So kind of backing up here, um, TPO charts, um, I don't know if you've ever heard the term auction market theory. That really TPO charts are what, it, or it's really represents the auction. And when you hear auction market theory, a lot of times you think of, you should probably think of TPO charts because the whole idea is that it's helping you understand the auction and see how price is running up and down and uh, backing and filling and creating a profile. And each profile will look different. They're not, they're not necessarily the same um, each day, but you do tend, it's oft, oftentimes you do see it kind of develop a fat or wider part of the profile. And that simply represents the area that it spent more time in. Um, another term, just to throw out another term, is market-generated information. And really everything you see on a chart is market-generated information, but 
uh, market generated information goes hand in hand with auction market theory. And what we're trying to do when we look at a TPO profile is understand the auction that's taking place. And there's strategies then that you can employ uh, around that, around this, this graphic. All it is is a chart graphic. It's not a system. It's not a trading system. And it's, it can be put to use in many different ways. I intend to show you some of the ways I personally use it, as well as some of the ways that are um, just other conventional ways that I know other traders put it to use. One, one quote that I really like when it comes to um, kind of describing a profile is price advertises, time regulates, and volume confirms or rejects all opportunities. I think Jim Dalton was the one that maybe coined that, and he's somebody who does a lot of education around market profile or market profile. And um, there's some good books by him as well that you probably are familiar with. But um, so price advertises, time regulates, and volume confirms or rejects opportunities. So as you can see, what I have um, next to the TPO profile is a volume profile. And that's something you may or may not be familiar with. Um, on my charts here, I obviously have it set side by side. And I do that for contrast so we can see volume but then we can also see the TPO profile. Uh, but you can turn that off if you don't want to see it. You just simply want to focus on the, um, the time profile. So a little terminology. The TPO profile, the one with letters here, that is time-based, whereas this profile is the volume profile. So this is built on volume, how much volume is trading at each price, whereas the TPO profile represents time. How, how did time build throughout the day at each price? So just to kind of say it again, each bracket, each letter represents a half hour, half hour uh, period of time. So let me split this again so you can see it. So you can see each of these is a half hour. So see K period right here. This was this was just today. It topped out in J and then it, it, it kind of came down and sold off. Well, K, this represents all the trading that occurred from this price here at the high 3677 down to 366775 traded all those prices during that half hour period. So you can see when I split this apart, you can get a better feel for what it looks like more in a traditional manner. But when then I unsplit it, which I simply left click on a letter and it brings up this menu, left click on a letter, it'll bring up this menu. I'm gonna remove splits and merges and it stacks them all up so that we can see uh, where, uh, where the thin, where it's spent less time and then where it has spent more time. These thicker prices, these areas where it's thicker is where it has spent more time during the day. And so it can be real interesting to see, okay, well, I know this is where it's spent more time. What about volume? Did it spend a lot of volume there? And let's just look at this, you know, this section right in here. Yes, it did, but actually the higher volume prints below it and there's there's some above it up in here. Just little things I'm I want to point out. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about um, a couple components that go into this chart. And one of them is considered or called, I should say, the value area, the value area. And the value area can be, it's basically represents 70% of the day's trading, one standard deviation of the trading. And it gets set based on where the highest, uh, they call it the POC, point of control. That's another term, point of control. And it would be, uh, it's right here on the chart. And that's where it's considered to have spent the most time. 
Now you you'll not to confuse POC with VPOC, VPOC, that's volume point of control. The volume point of control is where the most volume occurred. And oftentimes they will line up, <coughs> excuse me, they will line up on the chart, um, but they don't have to. So I just wanna point that out. And um, let's see, I'm gonna click the gear and then click here. And I'll spend more time on this if we have time later in this session. Um, volume profile. I'm going to change that to be like yellow. Hopefully I can see it. It's right here. So the highest volume price, which is the VPOC is up here and the time POC or POC is down here. So you're going to find in the, in the world of profiles, both uh, TPO profile and volume profile, there's some guys that are gonna say, well, this one's more important and others are gonna say this is more important. I am not taking sides. I don't really, I really don't care. Um, I'll put them both on the chart. And I do, what I wanna see is I'm looking for, I'm always looking for nuances on the chart, things where um, that aren't quite normal and I wanna pay attention to, for instance, and this is definitely a little more advanced, but for a good example of that would be if the VPOC, the volume point of control was right up here near the highs and say we close down near the lows. Well, that, that would tell me there's a lot of stuck longs. There's a lot of volume that traded near the high and there's a good chance those guys are stuck long because price would be significantly lower. Now that's, I'll get into more of that next time. But that's uh, one way you can utilize this type of information. OK. Um, so the value area, it, it, like I said, it represents 70% of the trade. So what one way, and this gets into a little strategy, one way guys will use this or traders will use this is to uh, sell around the high of the value area and buy at the low of the value area. Now, personally, I don't, I don't use it that way. I don't trade it that way, but conventionally that can be, a, that can be a conventional way of utilizing the graphic and some of the data that gets generated from it. All right. Um, and so again, the value area is this pink, shaded area that I have on the chart. All right. Um, I'm just so you guys know, I'm not looking at questions right now. I'm, I'm presenting. I, I believe ba uh, Bass is looking at them. He may respond to you with some information. Otherwise, we'll I'll catch up on all those questions near the end of the presentation. So I'm not ignoring you. I just want I just want to let you know. Um, OK, so value area. Another th another thing that's kind of a component to a TPO profile is the initial balance. And the initial balance is the first 60 minutes of trade, the first hour or the first two brackets. So A and B bracket on my charts. And you can tell on my charts here that I'm showing, I actually color code A and B to be a different color, which you can do within the software. You can actually color code the letters to be all whatever colors you want them to be. But for me personally, uh, the the initial balance A and B is are that's like the key. Those are key reference points for me as a trader, and so I color code them so that I they, they kind of stand out. And then when the profile, which I'll go ahead and collapse it here, I can look at the profile and I can see. Actually, today you can see this tail down here. This is it opened here, traded down, and then came back up. And then within the second half hour, it traded all the way up to here. But I can see, and you can see, really that first hour encompassed just about the entire uh, day's range, except we did, we spent a little time above it. Uh, but obviously, a a vast majority of the trade was within that initial balance. And so that's a key observation. Those are the things you kind of walk away, uh, not walk away, but as the day builds, you are noting that uh, and uh, it can help build 
a narrative as to uh, which, which way you maybe want to be positioning yourself. So one thing I jumped over here in my notes is um, one of the big benefits, and you often hear this thrown around when people discuss TPO charts, is that it provides context, a market context. It provides a, a, just a different view of the market. Now I'm only looking at just today's action. We can, we'll look at it. Um, well, actually, if you look over here to NASDAQ, you can see multiple days of price action, but you get a whole different understanding of the market. And I'd like to throw in auction market uh, when you look at profiles, TPO profiles versus a candlestick. And I have no benefit in trying to convince you to use this chart. It, I don't I don't care. You use use what works for you. Um, but this is a really unique way to view the market and interpret it and remove yourself or, or take a step back from the noise of the market. Because I know oftentimes traders get sucked into the price action and they, you just don't know what's up and what's down. It's just you get pulled into all the price action, whether you're over trading or whether you just don't have a feel for the market. This, uh, these charts, I really do believe, uh, I know for me personally, help give me that, that understanding, but it does take, it, it obviously takes work to try and uh, make sense of it. And obviously uh, I wanna, I'll try and help as much as I can here in these two webinars show you at least how I use it and um, how others how others put it to work. Um, so context, context is, is, is always key. Um, one thing I wanna, let's, let's take a step back here. I'm gonna double, I'm actually gonna double click or wait, double click here and kind of zoomed out. It's basically an auto, by double clicking on the price scale, it'll auto uh, auto scale. And what I want to look at is today's price action here in the S&P E-mini. Here's yesterday's down here. And I want to just show you some things that got, that are worthwhile noting um, as you analyze these charts. Because obviously you can use them for intraday trading as you're trading throughout the day. But Part of trading intraday is having the bigger picture. You should have a bigger picture view um, of what's actually trying, what's the market trying to do and is it doing a good job of it? Those are two questions you should always be, should be kind of in front of you uh, as the day is, is occurring. And today we came in, you know, we knew yesterday was down here and we were gapping open and we were looking to, well, the idea was, can it hold this gap or not? And it clearly did, but now that the day is over, uh, what one of the things I I note this every day is where was value? What happened today? Well, one thing we did gap higher, um, and the other thing I want to see is value, which value was higher. It's not even overlapping. Go, looking back over here to yesterday, you can see this shaded area value. You can see today was significantly higher. A lot of times, if I scroll back, a lot of times value is overlapping. You can see it's overlapping here. Here it was higher. Um, and then the next day it, it fell back. Uh, so one, one important observation, especially as the day is progressing, is value higher or lower? Or is it overlapping? And the value area changes throughout the day as, as time builds, as price trades, as volume is occurring, this will change. But as the day moves, in, moves on, it really does get set. It doesn't move a whole bunch, but I, I just wanna bring that to your attention. So value, where is value? Um, both from a day level uh, for the current day, uh, but also how's it compared to prior days? When value's higher, it favors the long side. And when it's lower, it favors the short side. So right there, I'm just trying to provide you a couple rules of thumb. These aren't guaranteed rules or any, no crystal ball or anything like that. Um, but 
Um, it can provide you like a day like this. Well, actually, no, let's talk about today. We can see when the market opened, it gapped higher and immediately it was trading. The market's, you know, trying to find balance um, and, and it's auctioning around. But as the day matures and you are seeing value hold, it's clearly much higher than yesterday. Well, that can help set the tone for, are you looking for longs or are you looking for shorts? Um, and I'm, I'm using, that's for me, it's a piece of my analysis. It's not the only thing that would say, yeah, I'm gonna work buys or I'm gonna work sells, uh, but it, it's something that you're trying to use these, these, this is a tool, you're trying to use it to help position you on the right side of the market so that you're not constantly fighting the market and getting, getting run over. All right. Um, initial balance. I, I mentioned it, but how does it get used? That's that. It's one thing to know what it is. It's another thing to know how it gets used or employed by traders. And you can see, um, well, now let me just focus on today. I don't want to get too, too off track. But a wide initial balance, think of it like a foundation or think of like a, you're building a pillar, okay? If you've got a wide foundation, the likelihood of it tipping over is reduced. Meaning if you've got a wide base, it's harder to knock it over to the left or to the right, if that makes sense. Well, if you think of a wide initial balance, something like a real, a fairly large ranging initial balance, which is again is the first hour, the likelihood, think of that as your base or your foundation, the likelihood that the market can topple, meaning run real high to the upside or run real low to the downside is reduced because um, that serves as a foundation. And, and I'm not saying this happens all the time, but what you see a lot of times is a market do a lot of rotation, rotation back and forth maybe probing those levels, which it did today, it probed above the initial balance before falling back in and, you know, and building what looks to be a, here, let me stretch that out a lot. Here's today. You know, it, it looks to be a pretty normal profile, normally distributed profile outside of this, this buying tail uh, at the lows. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, there's other ways it gets employed too, but for for really this webinar, for this webinar, I want you to simply think of it as a building a base and a foundation for which the market can trade. Um, institutions tend to do a lot of their business in that first hour, hour and a half, and then that last hour. And so you can utilize this as a uh, some insight as to uh, what they're doing or how involved they were, uh, how involved they were on the day. So, um, okay, let me move on. Oh, another nice thing, I just wanna make note of this um, with, these, with these TPO charts is the ability to trade from the charts. Now we're after the market, we're, we're kind of post-market right now. Um, and that's 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 fine. I'm not I'm not uh, necessarily trying to um, trade live and, and and all that. I'm here more to describe these charts and give you some setups and strategies. But just clicking um, anywhere on the chart, single left click, you can buy or sell. Well, buy you can see sell five limit or um, buy five stop, that's because the price is down here. So if I wanted to work an order, let's say that you could see the markets down here at 59. If I wanted to work a buy order, you know, let's just say here at 55, just click down here and I can put a buy limit in uh, there. Now, um, it was rejected because I think we're just about to, about to close, but you get the idea. The whole point is you can trade right from the TPO charts. And I don't think um, that's, you can't really do that a whole bunch with a lot of other uh, TPO charts. A lot of times it's just a graphic. So it's a nice nice bonus uh, with these. So you, can get, you can get it where your trades can line right up with the levels that you're looking at 
uh, maybe the value area high, value area low, things like that. Um, another thing that this kind of is more from the trading trading idea standpoint, but this is one of the reasons I like them is it shows, uh, I refer to it as excess and you'll, you'll, it's not a term unique to me, but you can see down here on this, this open, this, this open today was very, it's a big open. We we're opening out a balance above, meaning we we're opening up above recent balance or uh, area where the market had been trading. We're gapping higher and it's the first of a new month. So it starts a new monthly bar. And so we were, this open had a lot of potential to go one way or the other. Anytime a market gaps, it's out of balance. It's the way you need to think. And it has potential to go up fairly uh, well significantly or down or sometimes it does open and just churn but it holds the gains so it's still positive even if it churns um, but today was interesting because we opened we tested lower and it rejected and it never came back so this is considered a buy buy tail um, and it's a form of uh, some excess here and so I, that's one of the reasons I like I like these charts because it makes it very clear and you can use uh, this level, you know, right here um, is a level where if it gets below that, um, there's, there's, uh, it's eating into those, those single prints. All right. Um, hopefully I might, well, yeah, let me stick to my, my presentation here. Hopefully I've described what a TPO chart is um, before I move into some of the settings, but essentially it is a graphic. It's hard to call it a chart. It is a chart, but you're so used to thinking of charts based on time or, or bars that build. So this isn't so much bars that are building. It's a graphic that's building based off 30 minute uh, brackets and it builds a distribution uh, over time showing you where the market um, is doing more, I don't want to say more volume, this is the volume profile, but it's, it shows where the market's more com most comfortable and that's represented in time. Where does it tend to constantly be backing and filling? Areas where you have fewer TPOs, like this would be considered one wide up here at the top. Um, this, this next, these next few where it says JK, that's two wide. These next uh, several here would be three wide. And so you go down to here to where our POC was, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like nine wide. And so that's a that's another metric some people will look at. Um, the wider it is, the more um, we're clearly we, we would be seeing more rotations and the market is more settled at those prices and more likely just to stay around those prices as the day wears on versus breaking from them because it's there's so much committed at that level. Um, okay, so with that said, let me go over some of the, the main features that I feel are um, worth noting. I, I'm not gonna go over every feature uh, just for sake of time and it would get, uh, we get bogged down in the weeds a little bit. But what I wanna show you is the ones that I feel are the, the, the main features, probably the most used features I'll say for, um, for people and I really do want to try and stay kind of at the beginner level or kind of introductory. So if you're starting to use these, these features that I'm going to show are probably ones that you want to uh, consider or you should be aware of. So first thing is I've already touched on it is the zooming, the ability to zoom on these charts. And if I'm hovering over the price axis and I'm just using my scroll wheel on my mouse. If you're on a laptop, um, well, I don't want to try to even describe it. I know I, I do it on a Mac, which is another nice thing of this because it, I can use it on my PC or my Mac. Um, and a lot of uh, TPO software won't run on a Mac. Um, and so that, that, makes it, that makes it nice, but basically just scroll. 
And to widen this or narrow it, just get over the, um, the background of the chart and do the same thing with the uh, scroll wheel. So you can tighten it up or widen it out. Some guys, uh, some traders really want to just see real, you know, real big and they're only focused on today and they're just watching these auctions occur. Others want to see it, you know, a little more traditional scrunched up and that's the way that is. And you can always get it back to normal, the auto scale by um, double clicking on the price axis. Okay. Okay, so um, hovering over a letter, notice it shows data, open, high, low, close, and volume. That's helpful when you're trying to maybe find a low or a high on a bracket. You can hover over that. Notice in the little pop-up, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but in the top left corner of the uh, little gray box that's popped up, it says M. And that means that's M bracket. Okay, that's just so you know what bracket you're hovering over and it gives you the data for that, even including how much volume traded in that bracket. Um, but hovering over, let me zoom in a little more. Hovering over a letter and then left click will bring up a menu and I can split the profile and splitting breaks it out like the candlestick chart. So over time, so it, it just, instead of having it compressed where they're stacked, where the TPOs are stacked on themselves, it widens it out. So really you can think of this almost as like a candlestick chart. Notice the shape, notice the shape of this looks very similar to this. That's why I have this over here. I wanted you to see, I want you to make the connection. It's all the same data. It's just how it's represented. And when you split it, um, it allows you to look at it a little bit more like a candle, but you still you still have these letters. And then to unsplit, left click on the letter and you can go down to remove, uh, re well, undo split or remove all splits and merges. So if you've done, if you've split multiple profiles, you can just do it in one click, get them all back to the standard, more the traditional, traditional way. Um, Let me um, split this one more time. Some now a little more advanced use, but I'll show it is the ability to break break a profile apart. So it's not just a single profile, but it's multiple ones. And you may want to do that when uh, there's a significant change uh, and or it's breaking out. So maybe when it was breaking out here in I, you want to split that split the profile going forward to see how it's how it's building. So if I left click, I can say split it letter. And so notice it took the profile and took everything from I onward and created its own little profile and left the morning, the initial balance and all this congestion, this, this uh, chop. And I can remove, I'm gonna undo that split. So there's, I can see this price action, then I can see this kind of separate. That's a nice feature. That's that's um, not not everybody's going to use that. That may be a little more advanced, but it's a very nice feature to have. Um, and so, I just wanted to sh show you that. So, left click, remove all splits and merges, and it just puts it back. Okay. Um, I'm going to click the gear, the little gear, and that'll open up the settings. And so you can see these are these are all the settings on a single screen. I'm not going to cover all this, but um, I want you to know uh, at least see see where you can get in and make these changes. Um, one of the big ones here is the volume profile. Do you see, I have this checkbox enabled. By having it enabled, it, it obviously displays it on the chart. But if you just wanted to see the TPO profiles and not have the volume profiles show, um, there you go. It actually allows you to get a little more on the chart too because it's not trying to make up for that added width on the chart. I'm gonna go back to the gear. 
and value area. Now I'm displaying it. I told you it's normally 70%, roughly one standard deviation. Um, but if you didn't want to see it and you just kind of wanted to clean the chart up even further, you can, uh, wait, did I do that right? There. So that's a little more of a pure play in terms of the profile right there, the TPO. Um, nothing wrong with doing it this way. Um, but it is nice to, to uh, have these other things on there if you want to use them for reference and learn. Um, initial balance interval letters. So two is normal, the first two brackets, but obviously you can customize that if you want. And that uh, I would highly recommend just leaving it at two. Um, that's the standard, but you know, play you can play with that. Um, and let's see what else is going to be important. I'll go ahead and re-enable those. The other thing, and I see a question. Julie's asking, do you ever include the overnight session data? And yes. Um, however, I like, personally, I like to see the RTH, which RTH is regular trading hours, the day session. I do like to see that profile um, separately. Um, and, um, but I, when I come in in the morning, when I come in in the morning, my, I want to see the 24 hour profile um, and then get a feel for how that relates to the prior day's action. And uh, then I'll remove the 24 hour and just show the RTH or I actually have a chart where I've done this and you guys might, you might want to, um, I'm going to show this. It's the good thing is it's on the recording so you can refer back to it. Here's a chart that I built. Let me, here's a chart that I built that shows this is today's RTH action. And then this was the overnight from last night. So this is a really cool feature of the software. If you, um, and here's my settings, I'm going to click the gear and you can add multiple sessions. You can add more than two. Um, think of a session as a profile, each individual TPO profile that you want to see, um, for a period of time could be a session. So you could build multiple sessions out. Heck, you could have one for the morning session, the midday or lunchtime session, and then the close if you wanted to do it that way. However, when you do that, you need to build them kind of like this, uh, the way I've start with the overnight. And then notice I have my overnight start at five o'clock and go to 930 in the morning. I'm Eastern Standard Time. And then I have my day session start right at 930 and go till four o'clock. I, I didn't choose 415 or 430. I just, I just, uh, for me, RTH is 930 to four o'clock. That's, that's how I, I do it. Again, you can do it however you want. Um, and so by setting it this way, and notice you can choose the start letter of each profile. So I like my RTH session to start actually with letter A. Um, and then I just let this one start with N because I think it's the next letter in the progression based on uh, the profile. So if I click save, um, you, uh, you can see what it does. So here's overnight and here's day. And even take it one step further, you can even color code I could color code my night session so it's maybe a little more clear when I look at the chart. Maybe I want it to be, um, let's just say lighter gray. Or now let's, I don't know, let's try this green. I don't know what that's gonna look like. Let's just do it. So now when I look at the profile, you can see here's RTH session, RTH, and then this was this represents the overnight the overnight action. Looks like I must have some custom letter color in here. That's why you see these Qs and Rs a different color. 
but you get the point. It's a really nice feature. That's an advanced feature for sure. You're not gonna see that um, too often. And it's, it's real easy to use just on that screen. So, okay, so I answered that question. Uh, yeah, I got that one. Um, and I've kind of I've kind of covered what I wanted to with respect to um, the settings. There's obviously a lot of them, um, and I would recommend just playing around, hitting save, seeing if it's you know what you like. But the big ones are going to be the uh, volume profile, and then the sessions if you want if you want it that way. Um, I'm going to change it back. And let me actually go back to my other profile. And let's see. Yeah, why don't I take some questions? Because I know we're 45 minutes in. I want to try and stick to an hour uh, just to respect your time. So I'm I'm looking, or uh, uh, Baz, uh, yeah, you want to? I was going to say, Trevor, there's a few good questions in here that I was kind of just keeping aside for the end. Um, one of them is, uh, the, right now, this is basically a 30 minute, like you said, the brackets are 30 minutes, right? So is that what you should typically use? Because there's no other way to change it to a different time frame, right? These are 30, 30 minute um, blocks. 30 minute, yeah. Yeah. Um, 30 minutes is like the standard uh, for, um, for profile. Um, that's the way it's... It just, that's the way it evolved when it started. And it's pretty much the way it, um, just the way people utilize it. Now, if you, um, one one thing you can do is you can merge profiles. I, now that doesn't you know, so much change the time frame, but it does allow you to, let, let me show you, um, I'll just show this because, We've had multiple days here over the holiday where there's a lot of congestion here, you know, a lot of just uh, backing and filling. And you can, by left, just left click on the letter, you can merge profiles. So merge profile left, and it just pushes, pushes profiles together and creates one big one. And so that's, um, you know, that's one way to do that, one way to um, kind of create a longer time frame it takes mult it'll end up taking multiple days and create uh create profiles so that's that's one way to uh here i'll just make one giant one here this is about a week's worth of profile so here we got one big one and then today today we broke out of balance and we're see if we can hold these gains so well i don't know i think that answers the question it's um you can't build a just a weekly profile where each letter maybe represents a day. Um, I don't believe you can do that. It's just um, it's going to be the 30, 30 minute brackets. And here's another one. Um, do you find TPO to be consistent in use across all instruments? So is this something that you could use on, say, treasuries and indices and commodities? Yeah, that's a great question uh, for sure, because um, I think a lot of times you see these, especially if you're new to this, you see a, a new chart and it's like, well, is it only good for the ES or the equity indexes or, or whatever? Um, and the answer is it can be utilized in every in every market. And I don't say that because I have anything to try and any agenda. It just can. I mean, this really originated more in the at the CBOT, Chicago Board of Trade, uh, in the treasuries and with the grains and stuff. And um, you can utilize it. I mean, it's a time. It's a chart that reflects price action over time and builds a distribution. So here's crude oil. Just an example. Here's here's an example of crude oil. I mean, you could tell these charts. It doesn't look really any different than uh, the S and P that I just showed you. Uh, the charts are going to look look and feel look and feel the same. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be consistent, and the the, the ideas, the strategies, the setups um, are all going to um, apply. 
Okay, that makes makes sense. And another quick question here is uh, someone was asking about those numbers. It's almost like the cumulative numbers. It's TPOs, and then it has like 122 yeah. or 98. Yeah. yeah. So going back to the beginning of the presentation, a TPO, that is a single letter. That a, a TPO, time, price, opportunity, is a single letter. So if you were to count up, let's take today here in crude oil. If you count it up, all these profile or all the, all the letters, you're going to have 174 letters. Yesterday, 230, you know, you can, you can see. So what that does, it gives you a measure of price action. Obviously, the more prices it trades, the more TPOs it's going to have. So you can end up getting a feel for that number, especially as the day wears on to um, is it tend to be a day where we're seeing more just range bound price action. It's not printing a lot of new prices and, and uh, having a wider range. Basically think of it as smaller range versus uh, wider range. That would be one way to think of it. Okay, let me see if there's something else. There's a, there's a few good ones. There's a few more trading related ones. Maybe we, those are something for next week, do you think? Uh, I'll, I'll answer anything. I mean, if we have time, why don't we? Yeah, we still got a, about 10 minutes or so. So yeah. um, so this is one, if you are awaiting initial balance range to print in first hour, does mm -hmm. that mean you don't enter trades until hour yeah. after open? Um, yeah, sometimes it means that. And um, let me kind of give an example of that today. I think of the market, I, I like to come into the day, you know, I do my homework well after the market and then before the market coming in, seeing what the overnight was. Today is a good example of, I know we've been, this is the ES, I'm back on the S&P. We've been going sideways. Um, granted, it had, there's some range, but overall it's congestion, it's sideways, a lot of overlapping price action in the, in the ES, not the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, you can see over here, it's been it's been moving. Um, but um, today we came in and we gapped out of the out of that balance and we gapped higher than the previous day's high. So in my mind, and again, going back to auction market theory, the market's out of balance. So I'm looking, I immediately put more weight on the potential, potential is the key word, for the market to move early today because it's out of balance. It's gapping higher. It's a new month, new monthly bar. A lot of things coming into play on the open today, uh, near all-time highs. And so today is a day where I wouldn't necessarily, and I didn't necessarily wait for the initial balance to form because I knew there was potential for it to move good one way or the other. On a day like this, where... You hopefully you can see my cursor. A day like this, now this was what Thanksgiving, so it's not much of a day, trading day, but just think of it as in terms of opening within the prior day's range, actually close, opened close to, actually maybe within the value area. That even makes it less, in my mind, less potential for an early move. And I might be looking for more of an afternoon move for the big, you know, for the bigger trade. Of course, you can try and scalp and, and this and that, but um, I'm trying to find where is the best opportunity for a good size move. And then I use use these uh, ideas to try and form which direction is could that occur and, and try and position accordingly. So that's kind of a long-winded answer, but the initial balance, sometimes I'll let it form and just let it, let it, uh, just be patient, sit on your hands and let the market form up before I try to get involved. And other times, if I feel there's high potential, um, then I don't let it form up and I'll, I'll try and get involved early. So that's, uh, hopefully that gives some uh, context to uh, how I use the information. Okay, there's another one here about various contracts have different start and end times. Um, mm -hmm. how to customize that. I'm guessing it's just a question of having multiple tabs for the various contracts. Yeah. Um, 
I, I'm showing it two different ways here. Here I have, these are modules. So this module, I have multiple tabs on that I can just click around. So here is my ESRTH, regular trading hours only. Here is my ES showing my RTH plus the overnight action. Um, and so, and you could have one that just takes it all, you know, takes it all into, so if I just click this tab, yes. And if I went up here to my settings and I'm gonna delete this session and I'll change this one to go basically from five, five in the afternoon all the way around the clock to four, I'm gonna use the four o'clock close. Hopefully that, that makes sense. I'm gonna hit save. And you can see it just now it's an aggregated profile. It's showing this is this would be a true 24 hour profile now. It hasn't I'm not showing the split overnight versus RTH. But that's what's nice about this. It's all tabbed. I can just jump over. Here it is split. And then if I just want the RTHs, here it is the RTH. Heck, I know some, they'll they just want to see the overnight action on the chart. They don't want to see any of the RTH. They just want to see and study how the art, how the overnight profiles play out. And so you could do that. I'm not, I won't take the time. Not that it takes that much time, but it, there's, it's really nice with that session, the ability to define the sessions. You can uh, really look at whatever you want. Okay, I'm just seeing if there's a few other questions. Actually, here. let me, you, you look sure. for another question. I have yeah. one other thing to add to that. One really cool thing I just thought of that'd be pretty neat to do, as much as I like to say the initial balance is a key part of the day, you could build, you could build a profile that only looks at the initial balances and it would just show you the initial balances for every day and get a feel for how wide they are um, how do they, how do they trade? And it, it's not hard to do. You could, you know, you just go in here and set it 930 to, I could say 1030. This is like good homework stuff right here. And so there's all my initial balances. You know, how many times does B period overtake one of the extremes of A period? That's a, that would be a good study. Um, and so, I don't know, I'm just showing you because there's a lot more flexibility than meets the eye when you uh, start playing around with that. All right, go ahead. I'm yeah, and, and that's another good point. Um, if, if you, we have market replay, which is a great tool for this when you're over the weekend, when you don't have any trading going on, you could use market replay with TPOs and you could do all this type of homework stuff with real time data, well, not real time, yeah. but it, it'll look like real time data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's great. Uh, here, why, one last one, which might be a good one to kind of finish it off. Um, this question is, Dalton says TPOs do not give buy sell signals. What do you like to pair with TPOs to give you these entry signals? Yeah, I'm not gonna um, argue one way or the other on that. Um, it's true, this isn't a system. This is just representing that market generated information. Um, and it is 30 minutes, right? These are 30 minute brackets. So I personally use a 15 minute candle and then a one minute candle. So I kind of break it down from here. This is what I look at to really help form my context and my read of the market. What is the market trying to do? Is it trying to go higher, trying to go lower? And I utilize the profile um, for that. But my trigger chart goes right down to a, uh, the 15 minute and the one minute. And there's nothing, uh, again, no crystal ball there, nothing specific. I mean, I, they're very simple uh, candlestick charts that I'm looking at there. And I, I, I kind of put all this information together to trigger trigger the trade. That's how I do it, but yeah. there's no right way to do it. You just kind of got to find what works for you. Yeah, it makes, makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's basically all we have time for today. But um, like you mentioned, Trevor, there is another one next week. Uh, I think it's exactly the same 
same time next week. So that's uh, December 8th at mm -hmm. 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, that'll go in a little bit more in terms of like identifying trade setups, yes. uh, that type of thing. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to get, I want to get more into not so much the basics of what a chart is, but more how to use it in that webinar. And um, I'll give some specific examples of how I personally use it. Um, but I do want to, I'm not trying to just show people how I trade with it. I really want to try and show you some of the conventional stuff and then some, some of the more finer nuances to a profile that you may not arrive at when you first start using it, but after you've used it for um, some time, uh, some things that I think I can show you some things that are pretty unique that uh, would hopefully be helpful. Yeah, definitely. And I just posted or pasted the uh, the link for the sign up. For, so if you haven't yet signed up for that, if you do want to follow along or you, you'll get a recorded uh, copy of that anyway, but feel free to do that as well, because I'm, I'm sure that'll be very, uh, very useful as well. Yeah, yeah. I think, okay, I think that's good. that. That's all. I mean, we yeah. Thank you so much, Trevor, for this. This has been um, more than useful, I think, for uh, for a lot of us just to kind of get an understanding of um, how to use these TPOs, or at least also just to kind of kind of dig into the settings and um, try to kind of mess with it and kind of see how it works, how it works for you know for you personally. So that's that's great. Good. Well, good. I'm, I uh, really do hope it uh, was helpful for everybody, and I look forward to uh, having you back next week, and we'll we'll dig in some more. All right. Sounds good, Trevor. I very much appreciate it. Everyone, uh, thanks so much for uh, for joining us, and uh, we hope to see you again here next uh, this time next week. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.